Good to you, everybody. All right, I hope the, uh, whatever the hell brings you presents. I hope they don't bring you a console. I hope they bring you a PC or enough money to build a PC that will stop all over the consoles. That's what we're going to do in this episode. Talk to you guys about a PC that's around 350 bucks that will destroy any console. All right, listen, guys, this is not uh, intended to be a video about bashing consoles, but the argument I'll make for PC is that for the same amount of money, you can get a PC that will play a gazillion games. It's backwards compatible with everything. It'll play emulators. It'll play ROMs. It'll play most of your consoles out there, including the Wii, not the Wii U and stuff. But yeah, it'll play all those. Um, it is a learning machine. It is a multi-purpose machine. It is a media machine. It'll do everything. So you can do some of this stuff on consoles. Not really. And you can learn with it. So not only can you game, but you can also learn. So anyway, let's get down to business and uh, talk about what I would build if I had about 350 bucks. Now there's two different ways to go here. AMD has a quad core for under hundred bucks that is pretty good. And Intel in the lower price range has an i3. It's a dual core. It's okay. Uh, single core performance is faster than the, uh, you know, the AMD FX 4350. So you're gonna have to figure out if you want quad core or dual core. For most games, the i3 is going to be just fine, but it's going to be more expensive. The platform is newer. It's got newer features. Uh, you know, you got PCI Express Gen 3 instead of Gen 2, but that doesn't really matter for most, you know, single GPU applications, games, and that sort of thing. You're not even going to really notice that big of a difference. You're going to get M.2, so, so you're going to have to decide if you want to go with Intel for, like, newer features and, you know, more upgradability, or if you want to go AMD for just lower cost and also pretty, it's a pretty good bang for your buck. So... Let's get it right into it and start off with the Intel platform. Um, Intel also uses DDR4, so we'll, we'll check out the CPU, the RAM, and the motherboard for Intel. And then we'll show you the CPU and the RAM and the motherboard for AMD. And then all the rest of the parts are going to be the same for both systems because they're just platform agnostic pieces. If you haven't built before, that's how it works. First off, let's start off with the i3-6100. This is a decently fast little dual core because it's 3.7 gigahertz but it's still a dual core it has a decent frequency it's gonna be great for games that are not hyper threaded only three megabytes of cache so it's still you know a baby cpu uh but it'll get the job done and uh, it's you know four threads now for the motherboard the uh, asus h110m a m.2 now this motherboard is 1151 uh, socket and uh this one the big thing with that is that it has m.2 on board uh, you've only got two RAM slots, so it's a pretty minimal motherboard, I mean, a micro ATX, but having the M.2 on board is really nice for feature upgradability. And Asus has some pretty nice features, you know, you got your USB 3 and all that stuff, of course, but, you know, Fan Expert's pretty decent. Um, it's just a newer platform with the newest features. The M.2 is the big deal for me on this motherboard. Uh, next up, Mushkin DDR4. This is a great price. The black line memory is really nice, 8 gigabytes um, of the DDR4, it's DDR4-2400, so... It's a really, really nice price uh, at $44.99 for that. All right, so let's say you want to go save a little bit more money, but also get a system that's really, really fast. Go for the AMD FX 4350. Now, this quad core um, is going to be better in applications that need more cores, but the i3 is hyper-threaded, and it's better per core, so it depends. Some games, like I said, may be faster with the i3, but this one is just cheaper and it will get the job done. It's, you know, it's a decent quad core. For the motherboard on this one, let's go with the Asus uh, UATX DDR3. Uh, just a minimal motherboard that has everything you need. And again, this platform is older, so you're only gonna get PCI Express Gen 2 instead of Gen 3. But for, you know, a single slot graphics card, you're not gonna notice any difference in benchmarks, really. Maybe less than 1%, so don't worry about that. If you see Gen 2 and Gen 3, don't think, oh no, my graphics card's not gonna work. It'll work just fine. All right, for the memory on this one, let's go with some DDR3. It's funny that they're about the same price now. DDR4 used to be ridiculous, but this Patriot Viper Series 3 DDR3, uh, it's only 1600 megahertz, but that's, again, for benchmarks, you're not really gonna notice much difference at all in that and some of the more expensive, faster RAM. It doesn't really matter as much. As much as they like to charge for crazy RAM, uh, put your money in the put your money in the graphics card. All right. Speaking of putting your money into the graphics card, let's start off low and then go high. So this PowerColor RX 460 graphics card will play most games at 1080p on medium or high settings. Uh, some games will turn down to low, but you can still play most of your games out there at 1080p just fine with this uh, 460, and it's going to be faster and give you a better experience than just about every console out there on the market. And that one right now it's on sale. You can get it after a rebate, which I freaking hate, but rebates you get about 100 bucks, and that's a really good deal. Now, if you guys want to step up a little bit, you can get the 1050, which is great for 1080p gaming. And I even did a few games at 4K. I mean, you could probably play League of Legends at 10K on this thing. I didn't even make 10K, but. Um, 
It's only a two gigabyte card, but you know, it's 128 bucks. So that's like the next step up. And I highly recommend this card. It's really nice for low, for low power systems. And if you want to spend just a little bit more, this one, the 1080 Ti, it's four gigabytes. Now, one thing that's interesting about these uh, NVIDIA cards is they are going to be better for a lot of the games that take advantage of texture compression and that sort of thing. Uh, they're just better at it. This new generation is really good at texture per compression, so a lot of the new games are going to run faster on this. And having more memory, like with the 1050 Ti, uh, well, it's going to allow you to, uh, I guess, higher resolution games, 1080p, 1440p, will play back um, easier because of the extra memory, so it's, it's nice. If you guys have the extra money, go for that one. If not, the 460 will get you onto PC and let you play all the games. For the hard drive... Guys, $18.99, it's 250 gigabytes, and it's 7,200 RPM. Decent uh, reviews on this one. It's, uh, you know, Western Digital. It's one of the blue drives. It's okay. It's not going to do a lot. You're not going to have huge media libraries or anything like that, but 250 gigabytes is enough to play some, some games. Uh, one of the biggest upgrades you can make after, you know, you guys build your system and then work a little while get an m.2 if you have the intel system or get a you know an ssd and that's like the biggest upgrade you can make you'll notice immediately your computer is going to be like way snappier but just to get started and play some games go ahead and grab this 250 gigabyte hard drive now these systems are not that power hungry the amd is going to be slightly more power hungry but even then that's a low power part um the evga 400 watt power supply right here is a very decent well-made power supply for the money you can get it for 30 bucks so I highly recommend that one. Uh, if you guys are going to, you know, maybe upgrade your system in the future, if you want just a little bit more overhead, the 550 watts, only 40 bucks. So both of the, those are a really good deal uh, there from EVGA. So anyway, those two power supplies are low cost and uh, decent power supplies. Last up, God, this case is ugly. This is the Rosewill, <laughs> the Rosewill case right here. This is the Ranger M. And uh, you know what? It's just a house for your computer. That's all it really is. Now this one is, um, it only has USB 2 in the front, which is going to be fine for the uh, for these systems. You know, if you want to upgrade to a case that has USB 3, you know, on the AMD, you'll need to make sure you have a uh, motherboard that has a USB 3 plug on it. Uh, the AMD does not. I'm not sure if the Intel does or not, but you guys can check there on the specs. It looks like the Intel does have a USB 3 header on board. So if you're, you know, using this case and you're going with the Intel, you may want to grab a slightly more expensive case. So it's going to be a slightly more expensive computer. So really, the AMD is the cheap console killer build with the 460. Um, but... If you guys have a little bit more money, the i3 and the uh, GTX 1050 and the 1050 Ti, probably a better way to go. Anyway, let me know what you guys are building if you're building like a really low cost computer. If you guys want to iterate on this and go cheaper and make a computer that's not really for modern games, maybe for older games and also just web browsing and word processing, you guys can, can cheap out even more than this. But this is about as low as I would go for a gaming computer and it will kill your console. Yes, it will. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and click on the stuff over there. No, over there. I don't know where we put it. Forum is down below. Just go ahead and click on the forum. Join us. We have an awesome community over there. You guys are awesome. If you guys are watching, hey, what's up? Um, grab some merch. We got some awesome merch over here. And everything else is awesome. There's social stuff down there. It's awesome. This tea is awesome. You guys are awesome. It's, have a good Yule, and I'll see you later. <laughs>